The official game update this week doesn't drop until tomorrow. But today, Jugex actually just dropped the biggest blog regarding Group Iron Man with the most details they've ever revealed. So today, we're finally going to get some of our questions answered because they're going to be confirming or not confirming some of the design pieces within this blog. First one in the very first sentence is that you will have standard and hardcore teams. Something people didn't know whether it was going to be a possibility, but it has now been confirmed we will both have regular Iron Man and hardcore Iron Man teams available when Group Iron Man does launch. Quickly, I am going to say here, this is quite a lengthy blog post, as you can tell by the size of the scroll bar over here. I will leave timestamps down in the description if you guys do want to hop around. But the goal of this video is to describe all of the new details regarding Group Iron Man in a short and concise way to prevent you from having to go through and read this entire blog post yourself. But first up, we have the general rules. This one is group identity. And not only will group Iron Man players have a unique icon next to their name like the other Iron Man modes, but you will also have a new group Iron Man armor set that will have a Roman numeral on the chest plate showcasing how many members are in your group. Combat in Group Iron Man will be dealt with very similarly to just regular Iron Man mode. If somebody outside of your group does attack an NPC, the drop will either go to the other person or disappear. Whereas if all four or five members of the group attack and only do damage to the NPC, the drop will go to whichever member is dealt the most damage. And now for group content, and this was a big one for some people, Group Iron Man members can tackle all of this group content alongside other people outside of your group, and that is Chambers of Zarek, Theater of Blood, and The Nightmare. If a couple members of your group are just trash PVMers or they're not on as much as you, you can take on some of the hardest PVM challenges within the game with other people that aren't in your group. Now moving on to high scores, and there will be a completely different set of high scores for each different number of group of players. For example, a five-player group will have a completely different high score system than the two-player groups. And this one may be a little bit more important. Ranks are determined by the combined total skill level for your team first, and then by total experience. But another note is that only XP gained while in your group count towards the group's total level. This means that if players leave a group and join a new one, your XP won't transfer over to the new group's high scores. Now moving on, we have recruitment, and all recruitment for Group Iron Man will be done on the Node, which will be a new island south of Tutorial Island. And first, you'll actually talk to the Iron Tutors on Tutorial Island in order to select the Group Iron Man mode, and then you'll run south and take the boat on the dock, and with that, you'll arrive on the Node. One thing to note though, unlike Tutorial Island, you will actually be able to revisit the node in the future. This will be the hub for all recruiting in regards to Group Iron Man. And if you do have a player that disbands from your group, you can go ahead and return to the node and recruit a brand new fresh player. They then go into the process of forming a group, and this is basically a very simple system, but they do showcase what it will look like within the game. You're basically just going to create your group, you'll right click players to invite, choose your group name but this won't be confirmed until your group has fully been confirmed. Now for a few hot topics. First one is the abdication of the leader. By default the person who created the group is the group's leader. However if this person does wish to quit the Iron Man game mode, they've made it possible for the leader to disband from the group without deleting the entire group in the process. Similar to clans, the leader can also step down. There's a seven day grace period before their decision does take full effect. This is to prevent hijackers taking over accounts and maliciously making players step down as the leader of their groups. And the previous leader will actually have the ability to pick their successor. Another important note is if the leader has been inactive for 30 days, leadership will automatically be assigned to the group member who was in the group the longest. What they do mention, don't worry, the leader is not entirely removed from the group. If they aren't active for 30 days, they're just demoted. And leaders can also remove players from the group, but there is grace periods regarding both leaving and removing players, and we'll touch on that now. So for the grace period, if you choose to leave, you have seven days to cancel the request before it goes to effect. And the reason for this is to allow people to one, change their mind, but two, also for safety. I touched on earlier regarding hackers, but also maybe even a potential misclick. Okay, now for account status. And this is in relation to leaving a group and picking another one. 
If you do leave a group, you can one, keep your group Iron Man status. If you choose this, you will be placed in a new group where you are the leader. Your group size remains the same. You keep your levels, stats, quests, variables, and untradeable items. However, all of your tradable items are deleted. Therefore, you can't hop them from one team to the next. Option two is just become a regular account. You will lose your group Iron Man status. You'll be removed from the group Iron Man high scores, but you'll be able to keep all your levels, stats, quests, variables, untradable items, and your tradable items. Now in regards to boosting. They want to avoid group Iron Man being meta and prevent a situation where experienced players come and artificially boost new groups. And on top of that, they also don't want new groups being tricked into paying anybody to get a solid start. With that, there will be a new prestige status on the high scores. Groups that remain the same after formation will have a prestige status. This means they are distinguished from other groups that have changed over time. This will encourage groups to not only stick together, but is their way of recognizing loyalty of a group that have progressed only together. This will be on by default and is lost upon inviting anyone else into your group after it has been formed. In the next system they're going to be implementing in order to counteract boosting is the gradual wealth transfer system. When a member joins a new group, there are hard caps on how much wealth that player can receive from the existing members, and this does include the shared storage, so you can't just yoink it out of the bank. This prevents existing groups from transferring all their wealth to new members before leaving. And the way it works is within the first week, the wealth you're capped at potentially transferring is 1 mil. Week 2, it bumps drastically up to 20, 3 to 50, and 4 to 100, with week 5, the cap being completely lifted. They don't want to overpunish players, but at the same time, they want to avoid any potential boosting at all costs. And now for content restricted items. To ensure that the player using certain items are deserving of them, they will actually restrict the use of certain items until that new player has successfully completed the relevant quest at least once. For example, if a player wants to use the Grazi Rapier, they must first complete at least one Theater of Blood run. And with that, they would then be able to use all of the weapons from the raids. So this essentially prevents you from just pulling one of your group Iron Man members along the way and dragging them up the ladder with you. If they want to use some of the best gear, they will have to complete some of the hardest content. And now finally to round off this video, potentially one of the biggest reveals from this blog post today, and that is Hardcore Group Iron Man Mode. One thing we really didn't know whether it was going to be a possibility or not, but a Hardcore Group Iron Man begins with a number of lives equal to the number of players in the group at the time of formation. Any death from any member will result in one life being subtracted from the group's total lives. This will broadcast to all players within the group who are online at the time, and offline players will get a message as soon as they log in the next time. If a group's total lives hit zero, the whole gang has their hardcore status revoked. The group will remain together, but will be considered to be regular group irons afterwards. Hardcore groups cannot accept anyone else into the group. If a group does want to invite a new player, they will completely remove their hardcore status. And on top of that, if anyone leaves or is kicked from the group, the group will keep their hardcore status but will lose one of its lives. And a big change to the system is normally hardcore Iron Man players have safe deaths within the game where you don't lose your hardcore status. For example, a safe death for a hardcore within the main game currently is like the Chambers of Zarek. But a big change, they reckon that's way too easy for hardcore group Iron Man. So for a hardcore group, they're removing all safe deaths across the entirety of PVM. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button. It massively helps me out. This honestly makes me even more excited for group Iron Man to come out. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys are going to be playing group Iron Man or if it's just not your kind of content. But with that, I hope you guys have a good day and I'll catch you in the next video.